Thank you, Pastor Barry. Good morning, church at home. As Veterans Day 2020 approaches, it is time to honor our many veterans here in our Rapid City First United Church family and those around the world. Some 17.4 million of our fellow citizens are military service veterans, of which 15 million served during wartime. We're 325,000 still remaining for World War II, 1 million from the Korean War, 6.2 million from the Vietnam War, and today with some 8 million Gulf War era veterans, and with a total of over 67,000 living right here in South Dakota. As you've probably seen or hear each day, approximately 22 veterans take their own life. Even more shocking is the 25% increase in active duty suicides in 2019, along with even higher numbers in 2020. When was the last time you spoke or communicated with a veteran or service member that you know? Sometimes just the simple act of saying, hi, how are you doing, can go a long way. Communities have many resources available but far too often the veteran or service member is afraid of taking that first step. Maybe you can be there with them as a friend as they take that first step. In his 2019 Veterans Day proclamation, President Donald Trump stated in part, Americans commemorate the service, sacrifice, and immeasurable contributions of our nation's veterans who have proudly worn our country's uniform to defend and to defend and preserve our precious liberty. As we celebrate Veterans Day, we pause to recognize the brave men and women who have fearlessly and faithfully worked to defend the United States and our freedom. Their devotion to duty and patriotism deserves the respect and admiration of our grateful nation each and every day. We are forever thankful for the many heroes among us who have bravely fought around the world to protect us all. As Americans, it is our sacred duty to care for and support those who have shown courage and conviction in selfless service to our country. Please join me today in this special prayer. Heavenly Lord, I bring before you the men and women who have been called to serve our country in the armed forces, on land, sea, and in the air, and who have spent much of their lives participating in the protection of our shores and land from the enemy that would seek to do us harm. Thank you for the selfless way that so many have been used to maintain our freedoms through their courageous acts, both at home and abroad. Thank you for each one. Bless them abundantly, and I pray that you would be their strength and stay, that you would graciously su supply them with all they need to continue to serve our country in a retired capacity. And Lord, for veterans and those in the armed forces that do not yet know you as their savior, I do pray that you would draw near to each one and make yourself known so that they may come to trust in Jesus as savior and come to be a soldier in the army of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, in whose name I pray, amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, John the 15th chapter. A couple very simple but powerful verses. Please receive the word of the Lord. If the world hates you, remember that it hated me first. The world would love you as one of its own if you belonged to it, but you are no longer part of the world. I chose you to come out of the world, so it hates you. May God's word be planted in our hearts this day. Well, this morning we uh, continue our, our fourth installment of our five-part series on loving generously. If you remember, over the last three weeks, we've been looking at a family, the Frank and Cassie Donovan family. A year ago, we watched the family as they learned what it meant to live generously. This year, they're continuing their journey with Jesus as they are learning to love generously. In week one, 
We saw them put on a banquet for the soup kitchen, invited all of their very wealthy friends. And you remember, we, we talked about who do we invite into our lives. A couple weeks ago, we talked about the stuff of life. Remember the yard sale? And the Donovans in their gated community had a yard sale, and they invited the members of the soup kitchen to help them. And we talked about how much stuff do we accumulate in our lives. We talked about does our stuff keep us from walking with God. And then last week we saw Frank and his friends try to buy Julia's freedom from a man who had ruined her life. And we talked about the walls that sometimes separate us. This week we're going to look at what does it cost to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Lord, open our hearts this day. May your Holy Spirit lead us into your presence. May we see Jesus and meet Jesus. May the video and the words that I share be lifted up with honor and with glory to you. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. What is the cost of discipleship? Places, people, places. T minus 24 hours. This wedding may be hasty, but it's not going to be sloppy. Ray, you're going to stand right over here. Sounds so beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me. Frank, Cassie, can I have a word, please? We tried knocking. Sorry about that. Getting ready for this wedding has been crazy. We're all running around. <laughs> so what can we do for you? The wedding? Yeah, for some friends of ours. Uh, they were at the banquet a few weeks ago. I think it was the one that you left early from. Frank, let me cut to the chase. We've received a number of complaints at the Homeowners Association about the yard sale last week. Complaints? From whom? That's not important. What is important is that we have a responsibility to ensure a reasonable expectation of security in our community. We live in a gated community. It's gated for a reason. I'm. Sorry, but was there something unsafe about a yard sale? The financial investment that you guys have made down at the soup kitchen is wonderful. And we're all for helping those folks down there find work. We just don't know if it was a good idea to hire them to work at your yard sale. I mean, did you do any background checks? They're not our employees, Mark. They're our friends. We're just all concerned for you. That's all. Um, listen, were you and Eddie arrested last week for solicitation? <clears throat> so are my parents in some kind of trouble with the neighborhood? I don't know. I know there was kind of a big stink about those people at the yard sale. What people? The homeless people. They're not homeless. They're really nice, actually. Well, whoever they are, my parents were all, the Donovans are acting weird lately. We don't want you going over there without asking us. That's stupid. Is it? I mean, doesn't it freak you out just a little? You've got this girl living with you who people are saying used to be a professional. And you've got all these homeless people or whatever coming to your house. It's kind of weird. For now, this is just an informal warning. But if you insist on continuing to put our community at risk, we'll be forced to consider probationary status. Probationary status? Mark and Marianne, you're on board with this? We've been friends since our kids were in diapers. <laughs> Frank, none of us expects it to come to that. We just want things the way they were. And then everything will be fine. And by the way, an event of this size has to be approved by the HOA at least a month in advance. We have to confer over things like security, parking, street access. You come to our Christmas party every year. 
We host five times as many people as will be at this wedding. And you've never once told us that we need to discuss this with the HOA. I'm sure you won't have trouble finding some place to move it. Otherwise, we're going to have to call the police. Thomas, is something wrong? Oh, look at you! Breathtaking. <laughs> Thank you. Thomas, she looks so beautiful. Can you describe her for me? Thomas, it is bad luck for the groom to see the bride in her gown before the wedding. <laughs> is everything okay? Yeah. It should... Could you give us a second, Dolores? Excuse me, can I have everyone's attention? I never knew you could grow so close to people so quickly. We want to thank you all. We are so extremely grateful for everyone around this table and I can think of nothing better than to share our wedding with you. But we've decided we should postpone the wedding. What? what? Postpone? What? what? What's going on? Cassie and Frank, Megan and Evan, you have all invited us into your homes and into your lives, and we can't ask you to sacrifice your friendships as well. Thomas overheard your conversation with the Homeowners Association. We think it's wonderful that you still want to do this for us anyway, but we can't ask you to do that. It's not fair to you. We can wait a little while anyway. We've enjoyed a pretty good standing in this community for as long as we've been here. And we're thankful for that. But not at the expense of living the way that God has called us to live. When he says that the world will hate us because he has chosen us out of the world, I really don't get that. And I don't want to be hated by anyone. Especially friends like Mark, Marianne, Allison. But if they hate us because we share our lives with you clowns, <laughs> well, I'm all right with that. We got you a gift. <laughs> oh, you did not need to get us anything. We didn't, exactly. <laughs> what is it? It's a 12A. A 12 what? Um, it's for the door of the guest house. When we offered you that space, we thought you'd be with us longer. And although we're happy that you have a good reason for moving out, we'll miss you. So as a family, we decided to keep that space available for anyone that might need it in the future. And in your memory, we have decided to christen it Unit 1-2. Hey. One to another. Be devoted one to another in love. Outdo one another in showing honor. <laughs> we thought that uh, we'd make it sort of our unofficial motto. It's perfect. 
How about a toast then? To Thomas and Julia, and to outdoing one another and showing honor. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Our scripture today from John, the 15th chapter, said, When the world hates you, remember, it hated me before it hated you. The world would love you if you belonged to it, but you don't. I chose you to come out of the world, and so the world hates you. Our question this morning centers on, am I willing to stand for Jesus Christ even if it means losing friends or encountering criticism or the hatred of the world. Difficult question, isn't it? In our video today, Frank and Cassie and their daughter Megan see long-time relationships that are being tested. Tested because they are choosing to love generously. The neighbors in their community take action. They call a meeting. They lay down the law. Stop the wedding or else. Or else what? They'll call the police. Their friends find every excuse to return to their normal lives. They leave, live in a gated community for a reason. To keep the others out. The riffraff from the other side of the tracks. The gated community rejects change in any form. They want the status quo to remain. Frank and Cassie's decision to love generously makes their neighbors very uncomfortable. The neighbors feel threatened by what they are witnessing. And so their natural reaction is to lash out, to set things back to where they were, to stop what's making them uncomfortable, to take control back in their lives. In Matthew, the fifth chapter, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. That's our main question today. Does your light shine for Jesus Christ? Does your light shine for all the world to see? Does anyone even know that you are a Christian? What have you done to show Christ's love to others? Is there any evidence of your faith? Are you afraid to step out? Are you afraid of what others might say about your faith and your willingness to love others generously? Do you see yourself as Frank and Cassie? Or do you see yourself as their wealthy friends? It's a hard question, but it's one we must wrestle with because it cuts to the very heart of our faith. Are you living for Christ or are you living in the world? In Matthew 16, Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, they must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for me will find it. What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet he forfeits his soul? Frank and Cassie feel the sting of losing friends because they are loving generously. They are standing for Jesus Christ. But a friend 
who hinders our faith is no friend at all. Did you hear those words? A friend who hinders our faith is no friend at all. Thomas and Julia recognize what Frank and Cassie are going through. And they try and help by postponing their wedding. Seems like an obvious solution, doesn't it? But then we must ask, have we ever been guilty of postponing our faith? When an opportunity arises, do I say, oh, tomorrow would be a better day. Next week would be a better week. Maybe next month. Maybe another time. Has there been a time when you've chosen the easy path? You chose not to step out in faith because of the cost. You want to remain comfortable. You don't want to rock the boat. The beautiful little gift of the one, two, a. One, two, another. Ray said there are more than 90 references to one, to another in the New Testament. In Romans 12, 10, it says, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourself. Powerful words, one to another. You know, I believe we're all have the capabilities to understand what is right and what is wrong, what is right and what is good, what is honoring to God. We all understand most times what God calls us to do. The question is, what stops us? from loving generously. James 4, 17 says, Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Frank and Cassie stood for what was right. Thomas and Julia, a blind man, a former prostitute, their lives were forever changed by Frank and Cassie, by their friends, and by their friends' faith. Hard question this morning. Think about your life. Has your life, your faith, touched another? Has your faith been an example for others to see? Has your faith drawn others to Jesus Christ. As I thought about that, I thought, does this church make a difference in our community? If our church disappeared, would anyone notice? Boy, that's a hard question. What are we doing? What have we done? What can we do for the kingdom of God by loving generously? Do we love generously in all that we do? Are we living out the scriptural call one to another? Loving generously is not easy. It's hard work and and the Scripture tells us that we may be hated by the world. But better to be hated by the world and know where our forever will be in the hands of our Lord and Savior. Do we love generously in all we do? Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, we're challenged as we see the emotions of life, as we see the ups and downs of faith, as we understand that, that not all people have faith or understand faith, and that, that sometimes when we stand for Jesus, we stand out as being different, odd. And so, Lord, 
disturb our hearts, that we might see you. Help us that we might know you. Draw us into that place where we love generously. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I apologize for the technical difficulty. I hope you understood the importance of the video today. How people see us in the light of our faith. I hope this week you'll get an opportunity to, to stand for Jesus, to love others generously. I pray this week that you'll take a moment on Wednesday to say a prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving for our veterans, for our men and women, across the, the land, for the generations of our nation. I pray this week that Jesus will walk with us and give us the strength and the courage to stand firm in Jesus' love.